Hey guys, it's Mark here from the ETF Tracker Show, and this is week 14, or issue 14, or uh, yeah, episode 14 of the Exchange Traded Fridays series, where we go through the latest news that's happened in the world of ETFs, both here and globally, of course. So it has been a bit of a Bitcoin related week with what happened in the US over the weekend and the initial kind of trading. We released a very quick uh, kind of video on what's going on with uh, Bitcoin and blockchain crypto related ETFs here in Australia, as well as what happened overseas with the listing of a Bitcoin futures ETF and what happens with the market there. And then in putting together the newsletter, there's been so much news related to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and how the floodgates are, well, they're, they're open now. So it's had its first few days of trading, BITO. We'll take a look at that. We'll see what more has been talked about in the news. And all of this is available in the newsletter. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can yeah, definitely check out the links that we have back to the newsletter or listen to it on Spotify. All of these previous newsletters are actually on the ETF Tracker website as well in the blog. So before it used to just go out as a newsletter in your email, but then you had to dig through your email to see if there's any more. But now it is all available there on the website. So please do like, share and subscribe at etftracker.com.au. Okay, so let's get straight to what is on the screen. So this is Thursday night. It is the 21st of October. This is for the 22nd of the week ending. So you get this in your inbox at 7.30. So make sure to check it out. It also goes on the website at that time as well. Um, in your inbox, if you are a subscriber, you get some details about like previous videos that we've done, anything that's kind of happened during the week. Bit of a shorter one in the email rather than the full newsletter. But what we're looking at here is a preview of the newsletter in, uh, in draft form at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here so you can see that. So what happened this week? It was all Bitcoin, blockchain, crypto, ETFs, as well as an update uh, we gave on Ausbiz. Normally that's the highlight of the week. Our, uh, well, we do it once a month there with Ausbiz, which has been great uh, as an opportunity to talk about data and the markets, our two favorite topics there. Um, and usually that would be the highlight of the month, but this week it is just something that uh, is overshadowed because of all the big news what's going on in the uh, the crypto space and as it relates to ETF. So this is not just for crypto. There are plenty of other great channels for that kind of stuff. Um, even though Bitcoin, I think it hit up to 66,000. Uh, was that a new record? Uh, probably was, I think it was 64K in April and then it dropped. But yeah, anyway, so we had a lot of news on that and you'll see that in the articles and the videos that we've listed this week because look, we do these searches for what's going on locally and globally with ETFs and it was all coming up Bitcoin and crypto. So that's just the way it is. Um, on Wednesday, we had Jessica Lung from BetaShares and she's also got a channel called The Lung Way. So we had her on the show as well. Um, that's as part of our interviews with experts series. So we'll take a look at that as well. So let's get straight to what's happening in the news. Uh, articles local. So we had the AFR talking about uh, Australian investors offered new crypto blockchain ETF. And this was something we highlighted last week. It also came up again, and it was FTEC. There's also CRYP, CRIP, and FTEC for FinTech. So FTEC is by EDF Securities, and CRIP is by uh, Beta Shares. But this one is an article about the ETF Securities one. And so it came out last week, actually. It missed our cut, um, but it goes into some good detail on the launch. It's the first passive ETF launch on Chiax. So that is actually quite interesting there because they've all got active ones um, over there. The ASX has a mix of active and passive. There's definitely a lot more passive. Passive ETFs are, are much more on the market than um, active, but yeah, worth a look at this one. So if we go to it by Tom Richardson over here, they speak with uh, Vic Djokovic, the CEO of the Chiex Exchange. So there's two exchanges here in Australia. There's the ASX and Chiex, and yeah, they both have ETFs. And Chiex got bought out by CBOE. Uh, not too long ago. So because of that in CBOE, if you look them up, they are a massive exchange. So they've got a lot of products, a big team. And yeah, hopefully that brings the 
Australia small competition and we as uh, retail investors, if that's what you are, you get to benefit from that because competition is always great, right? And so, yeah, this one will list up to 20 in terms of FTEC, it'll list up to 20 crypto blockchain based companies will be held in the fund. Um, okay, so yeah, they, they've got more details on this one here from ETF security. So just a nice short article there. And then because it's been all about crypto, Bitcoin and blockchain, the conversation, um, which I last looked at when they were talking about, maybe they had some other ETF stuff there, but they were also talking about a lot of stuff on COVID and um, the rollout of, you know, when we're going to get out of lockdown and vaccines and all that kind of stuff. But they got into the ETF space because it's just something too hard to ignore. So what is an ETF and why is it driving Bitcoin back to record high prices? And so they go through some of the details here. If you take a look at the article, they've got a chart here showing the Bitcoin highs, lows, highs again. And you can see here in 2021 that it did drop after that uh, high in April, and then it's recovered back to that spot and over. And we'll see, you know, we're heading into the evening over here. So we'll see where that goes in terms of a US. Uh, well, actually it's a 24 hour market, so we don't have to wait until the evening. We can see when it trades, okay? So yeah, that is interesting there. Okay, I'll just close this pop-up. They talk about here how an ETF works. Okay, so if you, weren't aware of that, they've got a brief kind of description about that here um, and how uh, fund managers will bundle um, these kind of assets from a range of locations into, into a fund. They're talking about buildings and shopping centers here in this example. Okay, so it's like buying a share in a company. Yes, it is, but it is a, uh, I guess, a fund of funds. It's a fund that has many different uh, assets inside of it. They talk about how the funds are managed and then what has this got to do with Bitcoin? Because I guess you could buy just Bitcoin on its own. I mean, you could mine it, you can go raw that way if you're keen and into the technology and the mining rigs and all that kind of stuff. Or you could just buy straight up Bitcoin and it's pretty easy to do, uh, most people would say, but there's a lot of people out there that maybe don't want to um, you know, worry about two-factor authentication or get another app on their phone like Bit, uh, Binance or Coinbase or whatever it is, or even eToro, right? But as a Bitcoin ETF, it now means it is available. You can talk to a financial advisor to get this kind of stuff. I saw that the ITO, which is the US listing of this uh, Bitcoin futures ETF is available on stake. And I'm sure it's gonna be available on other apps as well. So you can now get into Bitcoin via more traditional routes. But the other part of this is that um, for institutions that can't just trade straight up Bitcoin, they've got more rules and mandates and compliance. Well, now they've got a regulated kind of way to trade. So whether it's Aussie companies here, our uh, hedge funds buying into BITO over there in the US or uh, US companies buying into that, it is something that is uh, available, but they do also talk about beware of the bubble. Uh, you could talk about a bubble with anything. Bitcoin has been a little bit more interesting. Um, when there's talk of bubble and it crashes and, and goes back up again, it's, yeah, it's hard to talk about it as a bubble there. There's a lot of sentiment, positive, um, and yeah, some negative, but there's a lot of push behind it. Now we jump to something a little bit different, back to income, and this is from Livewire Markets, uh, two provider approved ETF portfolios for sustainable returns and income, and Ali Selby over there. So we spoke with her about income on ETFs. And here she talks with Van Eck and State Street. So she's got Jamie Hanna and Jonathan Sheed on this one. And the cool thing is, is that you can listen to the video or watch, <laughs> listen or watch the video, or you can read the articles, uh, sorry, the article here. So she's got both of those guys on there. So they talk about um, ETF size. They talk about the risk and rewards of investing in ETFs for income. And better yet, uh, and also they talk about active and passive ETFs, some of the top topics that we touched on as well. And even some of the ETFs that we mentioned when we spoke uh, with, with Ali, so when the ETF tracker did, and they list their model uh, portfolios here. So here's Jamie's, he's got IFRA, REIT, EBND, GCAP, uh, SUBD, VLUE, Coal and DVDY, so all Van Eck related ones. As expected, Van Eck has a range of ETFs and Jamie's from there, so that makes sense. Um, and then Jonathan from State Street, he's got equities, so SYI and WDIV, 
fixed income, he's got I-H-H-Y-G-O-V-T-V-A-C-F. And for cash, he's got B-I-L-L. And a position in cash as well, 2.5% of the model portfolio that he's put together there. So check out this article. You can go to the dedicated website for the income series. And here, the, one of the latest ones is from Joseph Flynn from Newberger uh, Berman. And then um, metrics uh, are their metrics credit partners to um, the article that we just looked at. There's also this one from Matthew McCready talking about income asset management and more. And you can see the other articles here, including the one that we were in. So yeah, if you are not a subscriber to Livewire Markets, make sure to check it out. Then we'll go to this one here, which is a short one from The Motley Fool on HGen and its performance. So this one talks about how the share price has jumped 18% in the last week for this hydrogen related ETF that only just launched. So it's got some of its largest holdings in Plug Power, Ballard uh, Power Systems, ITM Power, and these come from the Solactive Global Hydrogen ESG Index, and that's the one that HGen tracks, okay? Then in terms of performance, it started at around $10.09 on the 7th of October, and it's now being priced at $11.28. So that's an increase of 12% over what has been a little more than a fortnight. So that's it's pretty good. Okay, so yeah, it talks about whether you should invest in there. There's not too much more details. You can go to ETF Track or you can go to the fund website or you can look up the news to see more information about what's been going on at ETF Tracker here. We look at, uh, well, actually we don't have the data yet for this one because what happens is that with the metrics like flows and size and transactions and dividends and all that kind of stuff, we track that when the monthly data comes out. So this one launched in October, so it doesn't come out yet. We have to wait. And even when we do wait in November, when the data comes out, it's only like one month of it. It'll be interesting to see, but we do need some more um, kind of info on that. But still quite, quite a good one to look at if you're interested in that ESG space and going directly to... Uh, I guess the the elements are, that, that are part of the ESG and hydrogen there. And then we go to the ETF Securities Weekly Report. So as per usual, each Tuesday they come out with this and this was the 15th of October, so it's last week. And what they saw was that the new listing HGen was last week's top performing ETF, gaining 8.9% in the week. So there you go. It was 11% over a fortnight. So it slowed down a little bit in the second week, but it was nearly 9% in that first week, which is great. And yes, this is ETF Securities Report and it is their ETFs that have done really well, but that's just the way it is. They do list others there that um, are doing well and not so well, of course. So let's take a look. MNRS and GXD also performed strongly for the week. ACDC, all the month's top performers with CLNE and Earth. So I guess with that HGen listing and more people looking at ESG, things like those other ESG funds did really well. When you go through this report, you click on download ETF monitor, it downloads a PDF. And when you look at that, you've got a, you've got a set of tables here. And the first one is all about performance one week, year to date and 12 month, then there's flows and then there's trading volume. And that's across all of the ETFs uh, on Australian exchanges. So worth a look at that one. Now we go to the global ones and like it's been dominated by Bitcoin news in the last couple of weeks, it is continuing. And what we're seeing here, well, this is an AFR article, but it is talking about global. So I stick it in the global kind of section and talks about Bitcoin eyes record high as ETF products near launch. So this one was, um, yeah, uh, more about the goings on over there. So it was on October 18. So the Bitcoin BITO ETF had yet to launch, but on the news of it, you know, about to be launched, it's pending launch. It sent the price of uh, Bitcoin from 62, or it sent it up to 62,563, just shy of the record 64K, but we know that it has gone over that since then. And so it talks about the floodgates opening up here because others are also looking at futures ETFs because, well, Bitcoin futures ETFs. So Kathy Wood over at ARK Invest is looking at that. Van Eck uh, that we know from over here, Val Valkyrie Investments Invesco and Galaxy Digital. Invesco is quite a large ETF player over there. And so we don't see their ETFs here, not yet anyway, but uh, yeah, certainly is interesting there. So worth a uh worth a look and it also mentioned here last week that chai exchange boss vic Djokovic. so the australian securities and investment commissions has 
taken a cautious approach over the issue to avoid any missteps, but the um, there was a paper that has come out, uh, I think yesterday or something, where there was some uh, details about what uh, ASIC thought about the consul consultation paper that they've got out, which is all about crypto and how to regulate it. That is CP343. If you watched last week and before that, we've had guests talk about that kind of stuff. So Jeff Yu from Monochrome Asset Management, they are looking to list their own Bitcoin ETF here in Australia and they put in the consultation paper to the CP343 uh, yeah, um, response. And so it did seem like what uh, came out and there were, if you were on LinkedIn, you would have seen us comment on that. Um, Jane Hume, uh, one of the senators there for finance, uh, she spoke about that and others there. Andrew Bragg, I think, was behind this uh, recent paper for the Australian Financial Technology Council, I think it was. Um, I might have butchered that name, but it seemed very positive about what Australia needs to do for the crypto blockchain kind of future that is inevitable, it seems. So very, very positive there. No news on when we're going to get a Bitcoin ETF here in Australia, a local kind of listing. We do have these blockchain and kind of indirect holdings. So holding companies in these ETFs that may hold Bitcoin themselves or it's the picks and shovels, that, that kind of stuff. But it is interesting uh, that we are getting closer. The world is moving pretty fast. And now that this first one's open, this floodgate, expect more products and then with more products there's probably going to be a drive down in pricing in terms of fees and more innovation so that's what we hope to see <clears throat> okay to the next one cnbc sec is allowed is set to allow bitcoin futures etfs to begin trading so we know it's begun trading but this is like before that it's finally here after weeks and months and years of waiting for probably many uh, there's finally a Bitcoin ETF that's tracked the futures contracts on Bitcoin, so it won't be pegged to the price of Bitcoin, but it does mean uh, it does mean direct exposure to Bitcoin. I think I should have said indirect exposure there, so I'll probably fix that one uh, before this newsletter goes out. So with regulated assets like this, it means an easier ability for institutions to get Bitcoin exposure and is a positive sign for the local ETF markets, even though it's over there, it's over there in the US. When we talk to our guests, here um and whilst you know all these etf issuers and others that are on here they they all want to uh have innovation and they will look to the us as a bit of a crystal ball and just spoke about that on, on beta, beta shares and, and the long way the thing is you still got to wait for what asic is going to do <clears throat> so as much as you know we want to move forward here we still do need need that regulatory approval so you know we're worth um Worth pushing, but we, we need to get that uh, approval first. So here's what investors should know as the first Bitcoin futures ETF trades today. <clears throat> and so they mentioned that it hit the market on Tuesday and under the ticker BITO, 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 uh, and it tracks Chicago Mercantile's exchange Bitcoin futures contracts. So the C um, CMEs, Bitcoin futures contracts. But if you're interested in investing, financial experts recommend understanding the potential risks. There's always risks. And we see a lot of people talk about price, but you need to understand the risks and how to look at that, how to measure that, how to understand the risks uh, before parting with your money. And here's some things to consider. So first of all, the, the price of the ETF won't be pegged to Bitcoin. So it's not going to follow it one for one. It's a futures-based contract. So it's not a direct investment in Bitcoin. So worth a look at there and some more details. There will be additional costs attached. So investors should also be aware that a futures-based Bitcoin ETF could potentially be more expensive than investing in Bitcoin directly. That's because there are a number of additional costs attached to the futures contracts that ETF tracks, which can impact the price investors end up paying. And then any exposure to crypto is risky. So regardless of whether it's just straight up the cryptocurrency of your choice, Bitcoin or altcoins, etc., or even as a Bitcoin ETF, you, you will still get fluctuations there. It is uh, risky potentially as well. Although there is management because all ETFs are managed somewhat. Um, it's just whether it's passive or actively managed, but there is a management overlay there. So that does offer some protection, but it doesn't stop it from having the market fluctuations just because of what it, it, is, it, it is exposed to. So. Uh, a great one is GBTC. GBTC is a Canadian um, non-listed fund. It is trying to turn into an ETF, but it tracks 
Bitcoin as a closed-ended fund, but it's had issues as well. I mean, when I say issues, it's had pricing issues. If you're used to the Bitcoin kinds of fluctuations, you know, going from 1,000 to 30,000 up to 60,000 and all the downs in between that, then maybe, you know, that's not an issue for you, but um, it's had, you know, price kind of changes there, even though it is a managed fund. So it's just worth looking at. It's just worth considering um, what kind of investment horizon you're on. Are you out to make a quick buck on this? Maybe you can. Um, but it's very hard to predict. So what has been proven is long-term investing and what that can do for portfolios, especially given the, the power of compound interest and what can, that can do as you continue to reinvest. So yeah, um, depends on your horizon, but definitely a risky one. Yahoo Finance also talk about this as well. So probably a bit of uh, overlap uh, that we listed here. So they talk about the SEC approving the Bitcoin futures ETF, opening crypto to a wider base and how this is a step forward for digital assets. So this is the Yahoo Finance one. You can check this one out too. Um, so they go into a bit more detail. Uh, they've got the ETF store, uh, which is a company, uh, President Nate Geraci. Um, so he speaks uh, to Coindesk and he's talking about this as a uh, step forward, I guess, for the overall digital assets kind of market of bridging the bridging the gap between that and traditional finance, which is very interesting and how it's been a long time coming. If you um, look at the history, the Winklevoss, Winklevi uh, of Facebook fame twins, the brothers, they actually applied for a Bitcoin ETF a while ago, many, many years ago. And I say many, maybe it was only like five, six, seven. I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, back then they were talking about it. And then here we've got this other one, which is interesting uh, that made the news or, or came across our radar. And this Jacoby Asset Management received approval for the world's first T1 Bitcoin ETF. What they mean by T1, I think is direct exposure. Okay. And uh, that is interesting coming out of Europe. It's out of the, I think it's the Jersey um, Islands there. So they speak with Jamie Kershed, the CEO of Jacoby and there wasn't, oh, Guernsey Financial Services, I'm sorry, Guernsey. So there's quite a few European funds with um, affiliations into Guernsey because of the tax uh, kind of structure there and maybe other benefits. But uh, yeah, it is something that is not via a main kind of European, uh, I, I don't know how big it is, um, but you know, when you think of European and UK exchanges and, and German and, and all that, this is not one of those, so it's one of the island uh, ones. However, it is still a positive kind of move. And I think there was some uh, momentum out of France for like a blockchain exposed type ETF as well, or, or fund, it might've just been a fund. But all of these kind of things happening in the US, in Europe, here in Australia as well, it is, it's not a race, you know, we're all gonna get there, but maybe it is a race. So anyway, if you're interested in European investing and you want to look this one up, look up Jacoby Asset Management from this Funds Europe article. Hey, we're at that part. We get to the ETF tracker videos and not just the ETF tracker videos. There's also Ausbiz and other ones out there. But the first one we want to show you is the ETF tracker show. We interviewed an expert. We had Jess Long from BetaShares by day. She is a portfolio manager and also by day, but also in her spare time or so she does all of these other things to educate the market, which I guess is really important because as beta shares, you want the market to be well aware and understand what is going on with ETFs. And one of the things she said to us was that part of the reason why she started was because she was seeing bad information, even about Bitcoin, sorry, <laughs> Bitcoin, even about beta shares ETFs. And she works at beta shares and she works on these funds. She manages these funds, Ethi, uh, fair, so that's the global and the Australian ESG type ETFs that many people are into, as well as CLDD for cloud computing. And uh, there was a, another one that just has I it's I've missed it um, for now, but there is there is a fourth one there as well. So we we'll jump to the amount video. she gave us was Oops. I think ten thousand dollars, and she's like, okay, you have ten thousand dollars. How would you invest your money? Mm. So I just thought that was the coolest and funnest exercise today, and that's actually my first memory that I have of trying to invest in stocks. Um, that's brilliant. Yeah, and then, do you, do you remember what you bought? Yeah, <laughs> so 
Yeah, this sounds good. This is not financial advice because no, this course. was from a 10 year old me. Yeah. <laughs> but I bought QBE because I think my okay. dad was working at QBE at the time. And mm. then I bought ANZ because that was a bank that my parents used to bank with. Okay. Um, and then I think probably some other random name, but I just remember QBE and ANZ. Oh, that's, that's amazing. It sounds like you're a little portfolio manager already. <laughs> it's, uh, how old were you? What, what grade of primary school were you in? I think it was year five for my memory. So oh my probably God. eight or nine years old. I remember Ninja Turtles in primary school. So that's, that's very cool. <laughs> Yeah, true story. I definitely don't remember anything to do with investing. Maybe when I was a teenager and I see the the markets news and all of the, you know, in the back of the paper, they'd have what happened overnight with the markets and you see all the prices and volumes and you see all these companies and I was pretty much oblivious to it. Like I was aware that that was there, but it wasn't an, an area of interest. Whereas for Jess, she was interested in that. So worth a look here. We also speak about ESG. We speak about um, how she got into starting the long way, which is her TikTok and, uh, Instagram. And we found her, uh, via Instagram. So we saw all that there, but yeah, she's got a strong following on both of those platforms. You can see the chapters here. So you can go directly to a particular part of the video. Okay. So that is, uh, there available on our, uh, YouTube page at the ETF tracker show. And then the next one is Ausbiz. And we got to speak with Annette Beecher from Ausbiz. Still not in the studio yet, but they are just opening up. So um, hopefully by the next one, if things all go well, you know, nothing crazy going on with uh, COVID or anything like that, we will be able to go back into the studio to talk to the crew. And so we spoke about uh, what has happened in the market. It was a negative month for ETFs, okay? It was minus 1.6% performance. When we got the chi numbers out, it dropped even further. It was minus 1.7% when we average what one month performance was. Total return, so it's price plus dividends and other things being reinvested. That was a negative month, and it's for the first time in a little while. There was quite big negative months last year, especially in March um, and even February. But uh, yeah, it you know it's the first time in a while that we've had a negative month. It has been roaring before that as the recovery continues and the reopening continues. But it was not just that. It was also the first time in a while that ETF um, FUM, funds under management, has slowed down. And funds under management is a, it's a product of both the money going into the funds, um, funds inflow, but also performance of those funds. And whilst there was money going in, 2.9 billion in the month of September because of all the negative performance. All we saw was that, I mean, last month we were at $125 billion as an overall size for the market, funds under management or assets under management if you're from overseas, that's how they refer to it over there. But it was again, 125 billion. It changed by about 200 million and a little bit of change uh, just because, yeah, the poor performance of uh, what was going on in the price of ETF. So let's take a look at this one just quickly. I'll skip forward in the video. All ETFs together, you have to know your sectors. Absolutely. And the different sectors will have different kind of performance returns and even different sitting sitting at the same place that we're at now but it's day time there it's night time now everything just be pummeled last month not just that uh screen the month of september 2021 is such a tiny dot compared to where we have been in and we show um we try to show a chart here or there uh when we do the show so we'll submit that um maybe sometimes a few to go through in the episode but yeah that was the biggest uh, i'd say chart for the month that drop in terms of how fast funds under management have been growing. There were talks that the ETF markets here in Australia could get up to 140 billion. But now with it's only October, November, December, we've got three months to make up 15. We could get it. We could see five by five uh, if the markets perform well, but um, it, it might, you know, I think it'll get over the 130. I don't see it not doing that crystal ball looking and all that, but yeah, still it was a, a bit of a hit there, whereas it was on pace prior to that. Okay. We'll get to the compound, one of our favorite shows. And this one was quite interesting because usually it is, um, two of the guys on here, not all three. So these are the guys over from Reitholz Wealth Management. 
Brit Holes Wealth Management. I can't remember how to pronounce it, but it's usually Josh and Mike. Um, so Josh Brown and Michael Batnick, uh, they both, Josh, I think goes on CNBC quite a bit more than Michael, but Michael is also on there too, but they have their regular show. Sometimes they talk about crypto. A lot of times they talk about ETFs. More times they talk about the markets overall and yeah, just how to kind of stay sane in all of this. Sometimes there is a show that uh, Mike does with Ben and it's called Animal Spirits. But this one, they were all together for this episode of The Compound. They talk about 10 stock market truths. What are your thoughts? And this is the What Are Your Thoughts series. They all go through the BITO listing and how popular it was in its first trading session, 440. Four mil, sorry, $440 million in the first hour and just under a billion traded overall. So it's 49 minutes, 49 minutes in this episode. So make sure you check that out. Maybe watch it on the way to work, put it on in the background. I don't know, you can, you know, if you've got YouTube premium, uh, I can't remember what I pay for that, like 14 bucks a month or something. It's kind of like Netflix. You get rid of the ads. And it also means that when you close your phone, you can still play, uh, you can still play Bitcoin. You can still play YouTube videos. Okay. So yeah, I like to uh, use it for that. So shout out to YouTube, sponsor me. Um, and then we get to Ausbiz and it was all about uh, Bitcoin as well, but we'll start off with something that's not. So we had uh, a show here with Yvette Murphy from State Street. She was talking about smart beta strategies. And all about smart beta so worth a look at there that was just one that came out today uh, so if you're interested in different styles of etf investing then definitely worth a look at smart beta so uh, there's this video here you can check out all the stuff from van Eck and others that do the smart beta type etfs then they had a really good one here because uh, pro shares got to talk about their bitcoin strategy etf that launched on the new york stock exchange as well um, this is the big one. This is the BITO one. So they spoke with investment strategist Simeon Hyman, and he spoke to the guys about, uh, yeah, their BITO ETF. And that was also today. So great one to get on the show. You can see that here, for example. Bitcoin, where that's going at the moment, has been surging in no this doubt. The Andrew Gough again here. We've spoken to him a few times. US Bitcoin futures based ETF. I can't remember which presenter I speak to the most, but yeah, Andrew's probably up there. BITO, the ETF. The solution that a lot of folks have been waiting for, it's belt and suspenders. Uh, it is indeed the using the regulated futures market and that US 1940 Security Act um, regulated ETF that can go right into a brokerage account just like any other. So that's an interesting one there. And it's interesting because futures, typically futures are looked at to get a gauge on where the market is going. I mean, I would, when I used to trade, I don't do as much overseas anymore. Um, trying to focus on the home market. There's just too much going on to keep an eye on uh, things over there. But I would look to the futures to see what the, the next day or for us night, what that trading session is gonna be like. So Bitcoin as a future, is it going to lead the market in terms of where prices are heading? We'll, we'll see. I mean, it is based on the CME kind of futures contracts with Bitcoin. So you would think that it would. And then another one, skeptics feast on humble pie. Great tasting pie uh, as Bitcoin futures um, ETF launches. <clears throat> and so they've got here, Matt Harry, portfolio manager at Digital X. Um, he's naturally pumped as they should be being a uh, blockchain exchange here in Australia. And fun fact, the former CEO of uh, Digital X, uh, Lee Travers, he's moved over to Binance Australia and Binance Australia, that role of CEO was formally filled in by Jeff Yu, who we had on the show last week. And we're all connected to Kevin Bacon. I don't know if you guys know that six degrees of Kevin Bacon, or maybe I'm just old, I am just old, but you know, maybe that's still a thing. I don't know, but it is a small world in the ETF markets. And I guess a lot of people in the blockchain markets too, and then progress towards an Aussie uh, Bitcoin ETF is slow, <laughs> dot, dot, dot here. So this is from the 18th of August. They had Carolyn Bowler of BTC Market. So she's uh, CEO over there. She was talking about this last week. Or actually, no, sorry, on the 18th of August. So that was this week. Getting my days confused. Um, but she said there's no less than nine ETF applications with this ProShares Bitcoin strategy futures etf the beginning of many seeking approval and we mentioned some of the ones up above with van Eck, valkyrie 
uh, Kathy Woods Arc and others in Vesco. And uh, there was another one up there, but yeah, there's nine. A couple of weeks ago, and it's probably one of the newsletters, we, we had a list and it was from a tweet that someone had where it listed all the different types of Bitcoin ETFs as well as the futures ones and what uh, way that we're gonna uh, do the tracking. Was it gonna be synthetic or direct and all that kind of stuff that you get with ETFs? But there was quite a few that have uh, applied and been rejected. So um, now we'll see what happens to the floodgates start opening up. Then we also had this other one from Osbeer talking about hydrogen and uranium and how to play them. And uh, per the show notes, they speak with James Whelan from VFS Group. And he was speaking about how this, um, that you know, the current uh, look into, for example, the fuel shortage in Europe, in the UK that was making the news it's brought to light the shortcomings of over-reliance on non-renewable energy. And this has prompted a, a move towards clean renewable energy generation with the UK government set to announce plans to fund a new new nuclear power plant. Try to say that five times fast. And before the 2024 election as part of its net zero strategy. Okay, so worth a look at there. Nine minutes with James uh, from BFS Group. And then a couple from last week because these made, uh, well, these missed the cutoff, but I didn't include them, but I thought, well, I could add them last week, but then it doesn't make it into the video. So I should talk about them now. So these were from, uh, I think it was on Friday and it was the first one, an alternative to investing directly in crypto with the latest ETF. And this is the one with uh, ETF security. So they had Kanish Chug over there talking about um, how, there is a way to play the blockchain, but it's also fintech as well. So it includes broader themes like Afterpay in this particular ETF, as well as the broader kind of, um, you know, that fintech theme and just ways to play the blockchain thematics. So that's what ETF securities offer currently. So worth a look. And that is already trading on ChiX, but if you you don't have to worry, you know, is it ChiX or the ASX, just check with your broker whether or not they have FTech or these ETFs that you might be interested in. And then another one from um, Crypto Mania hits the markets uh, and sort of from beta shares launching their own crypto stocks hybrid ETF CRYP. And so this one doesn't trade yet on the ASX, but there is, if you are interested, a way to register your interest for that one. Um, I could have said that better, but hey, that's out there now. I'm not going to go edit it. And now we are at the podcast section. So this is a podcast we haven't listed before but something we came across and we thought was interesting it's called etf battles etf battles what's that all about and um in this one it looks like they do some head-to-head -head comparisons and this one is not about blockchain etfs funnily enough it's why water stocks might be might offer bigger growth versus technology and they look at the etfs called aqua great name but it's spelled a q w a so not quite i would think what i would think of for for Aqua uh, being water related, but there's also FIW and PHO. And so, yeah, check this one out. Um, there's First Trust Water ETF, Invesco Water Resources ETF, that's the PHO one, and Global X are the ones with Aqua. And then we also saw the Equity Mates guys, uh, Bryce and Alec, talk about who are the winners in the payment wars, and this is with ETF Securities. So they also speak to uh, Chris Titley from Morgan's. And if you're on LinkedIn, make sure to check out Chris's posts because he'll often post some quizzes about uh, interesting things going on in the fintech kind of markets and markets in general. So worth a look at there. They also speak to Kanish. So um, he makes a, a double, triple, I don't know, appearance a couple of times here. Talked about the rationale for creating an ETF that tracks this space and the importance for retail investors to be exposed to this new disruptive technology. So worth we'll a look at there. 39 minutes if you've got some spare time. Now we're at the tweet of the week. And um, yeah, given what's going on, we couldn't ignore this one from the desk of Eric Balchunas at Bloomberg. And he shows that the BITO first day trading with around 1 billion in total volume. It's gone over that because it, it is the second day now and the price did increase overnight as well. It'll be the third day tonight. So by Friday, who knows where it'll be up to. 440 million in the first uh, hour. And you can see here where that ranks. So just about at $1 billion in total volume per day, currently at 993, but trade's still trickling in. Easily the biggest day one of any ETF. It also traded more than 99.5% of all ETFs which is crazy, um, definitely defied our expectations. Um, I knew it was gonna be big because 
previously we, we had uh, people speak about this and articles talk about this, that with a Bitcoin ETF of whatever sort it was, it's kind of um, that type of ETF where when you launch it, you know there's going to be uh, interest in it straight away, just given the nature of uh, crypto and Bitcoin kind of markets. So I knew it was going to be big, but not this big. So yeah, that, that is quite interesting there. And you can see some of the other ones. Um, Buzz, which is the Dave Portnoy, I think of DraftKings or something like that. But, you know, he was just sports betting guy, got into the betting kind of space. It was very prominent in the news around the, the whole Robin Hood GME kind of point in time at the start of this year. I know, can't believe it. It is the end of the year, getting to the end of the year already. Where did time go? But yeah, Dave Portnoy, um, I think he was part of this Buzz ETF or his companies are in there, but there's some mention of him with Buzz, which is tracking social media kind of sentiment. Um, and that's by Van Eck. That was the biggest one that launched in terms of natural one day volume, 439. This one did 440 in the first hour. So... <laughs> I don't know. That's um, that's popularity as a signal if you ever saw one there. So with a look at that, uh, we link to the tweet. And now we look at the chart of the week. And again, we're not going to ignore BITO. This is a chart showing how it has traded in its first day. It's had its second day and it is up further. I think it is nearly at the $42 mark or, or just, um, it might just be below that. But it was, yeah, starting off at 41 and uh, heading up to that kind of mark. Uh, check out where it's at in the latest details. But uh, yeah, worth a look at there. That's the child of the week. Okay, further ETF education. And let's take it back to basics. This is the ASX's ETF course. And it's an introduction to buying to the types of ETFs that are out there from the exchanges. And you can see some more of the chapter kind of summaries here. Where do ETFs fit in? Introduction to ETFs. What are ETFs? Buying, holding, and selling ETFs. Australian, international, fixed income, commodity, and currency ETFs. It breaks it all down here. So you can open this, these ones up and you've got a PDF here. You've got a bit of a time to complete that and you know read it, take a look, but it's all here and definitely a recommended kind of space to look at to start. Okay, and they've got some mini quizzes here as you go along the way. Nothing too hard. No CPD points for this one. But if you do want CPD points, then there are other ways that you can learn about blockchain. Um, check out Monochrome and their research center. So they've got a couple of articles out there and you can do a quiz, um, short quiz, and you can get some CPD points for that. So worth a look at there for advisors. And then we get to the end of the show. So more on how to access the ETF Tracker app, the ETF Tracker forum as well. We've got a new thing in the forum. I'll just show you here. Uh, we've got the ETF podcast and videos where you're probably listening and watching uh, to this right now. And if you are watching on Ausbiz, you can go to our page. You can follow me, Mark Monfort, and there's many other experts out there. I would label myself as more of a, you know, I know the markets, but more of a data expert and the others are very much very experienced market experts. So definitely follow them. If you want the data, what's the latest and greatest in terms of the world of ETFs, fun facts, statistics, and all that kind of stuff, then yeah, definitely follow me. Ausbiz is free to sign up to, so make sure you do grow the subscribers. They hit 50K, I think a month or two ago, so who knows where they're up to now. It is going from strength to strength. And the same thing, check out Livewire Markets and the type of stuff that they're doing as well. Okay, so I just open up the forum here. In the general discussion area, I've got a new thing, which is the welcome slash startup pack. So if we zoom in here a little bit. Because there's so many different things going on in the ETF tracker, I thought what I would do is just break it down and show people who sign up, what do you get? You've got the ETF tracker app, you've got the app guide to go with that, the blogs and different sections in the blogs, videos as well. You can see some of the videos here that we've had, podcasts that you can listen to, other resources. You've got the forums, you've got us on socials, and I think that's enough, don't you? You know, it's a little hobby that we're doing here. We're not getting paid for this, guys, you know, so... I thrive on your likes and your subscriptions and the interest that people have in the ETF markets. We just want to help. We do like by day. Um, so we spoke about Jess Long, you know, she, she, what she does by day working in the ETF markets. By day, I'm a consultant. I do a lot of stuff in the data space. I do a lot of stuff in the investment space as well as other industries as well. And this is just a passion project. So, you know, a lot of work on this goes into it on the weekends. But, um, yeah, 
that's that's it. Um, I got a second screen. I've got a new mic stand as well. So being able to check that out, <laughs> I've been able to invest in a few things to try to just uh, make this show a little bit better um, and make my life easier so that I can deliver some cool content, news, and products for you. If you did like this, please do like, share, and subscribe. And we hope that you have a great weekend. Uh, it is Friday, heading into your weekend. Hope it's sunny. Hope you get to do something fun. Catch up with friends if you are out of lockdown and happy investing. Till next week, see you later.